Good evening, my beloved family. Trending stories making news headlines today. 1. The Local Government Service Commission is preparing to recruit over 700 new employees for various positions in local government. According to Chairperson Axon Sajani, these roles will primarily be in technical fields such as engineering, surveying, and architecture. This recruitment is part of a broader restructuring effort within the local government, which has led to the creation of these new vacancies. During a press briefing in Lusaka, Sejani detailed that the restructuring process has already seen the approval of new structures for all 96 town councils, with municipal councils still pending. This restructuring includes retitling positions. For example, the Deputy Council Secretary is now known as the Director of Human Resources and realigning departments, including the establishment of a new Department of Community Services. This initiative aligns with the government's decentralization policy and is part of a larger goal to integrate more workers into the local government system. Currently, the Commission has received over 35,000 workers from the central government with a target of 51,000. By the president, the relaunch by the president of this policy in May last year was a combination of a number of notable developments that went to demonstrate the seriousness and the resolve of the new government to bring about real decentralization. We saw, for example, the nationwide establishment of wide development committees throughout the Republic. public. Committees which were going to play a key role in ensuring that our people participate in determining their agenda of development. Because these are organs through which they express their desire. So throughout this country, these committees were established. We also saw the complete and total and timely release of the local government equalization fund to all the councils countrywide. It never used to be the case. These funds were released. We also saw that every local authority had a human resource management committee. The effort of this commission is you sit down here today, every local authority in this country as a human resource management committee, to whom the commission has surrendered considerable powers of recruitment of certain categories of, of our staff. We also saw the issuance by cabinet office of secular number two of 2023, signaling in earnest the decision of government to devolve staff, central government staff, from the center to the local authorities. I'm glad to say that uh, that process is only in earnest. As we sit here today, we are in receipt of in excess of 35,000 central government staff in the local, local, local authorities. We are in the process of infusing, reorienting, and acclimatizing to the way we do things in local government. We also saw, perhaps more markedly, a massive increase in the allocation of the Constituents Development Fund to every constituency in this country. That was a significant, significant problem. 
these notable developments preceded the launch of the policy by the president in a strong way in May in 2023. So that launch, in effect, was a confirmation that decentralization is only in earnest and it is irreversible. So everybody had to adjust and accept the realities of the new situation in which we live. Decentralization also ensured that the power to determine what communities needed rested with them. Because that's the right way. The people for whom development is meant must be the ones that determine what they want. Not, not everybody else from Lusaka. It is the people on the ground who know that they want a school there. They want a clinic there. They want a ball there. This development is key. If development is going to be relevant, it must come from the people themselves. Mm. Otherwise, it will be irrelevant. You end up with white elephants all over the country. Mm. So the power has deliberately been given to the people themselves. It is also important if poverty is going to be reduced, that it is the people themselves make the decisions. On what they want to do. The resources are with them. What they are going to do with, that, with those resources is, there, is up to them. And in the process, they will do those things that will make a material difference to their lives. And in the process, reduce poverty. It must be that way also if jobs are going to be created. The resources that are sitting with the communities now mean that the works that are going to be done by the communities, some of this work, most of this work, will be done by the local people, mm. thereby giving them the jobs. So it's a very, very serious and consequential development. Hence, when all these things have been said, it is left to the local authority as the engine which has been identified to spearhead development, to spearhead all this effort of ensuring that the people are given the space, the resources, the opportunity to determine their own destiny. So if, therefore, the local authority is the focal point of development, it is logical, ladies and gentlemen, that we spare time to look at the shape in which this institution is, and also spare time to look at what sort of critical staff must it have for it to operate in the manner that we wanted to operate. A question was asked at one stage whether with all these changes that are taking place, the local authority are in a structure, in a shape suitable enough to be responsive to the demands of the new responsibilities that were placed on them. And the answer was a resounding no. And therefore, it became necessary that we look at the structure of the local authority and do something to that structure 
which will make it be able to shoulder the new responsibilities that are placed on its shoulders. Hence, the decision to restructure our local authorities so that it is in a shape <coughs> that is able to handle these increased responsibilities and be responsive to the changes that are taking place as a result of the operation of the policy of decentralization. As we speak, I'm pleased to inform my colleagues that the restructuring exercise of our local authorities is moving very well in need. In fact, at this stage, the new structure of our local authorities for the, all the 96 township councils has been approved by capital. What is remaining now is the municipal structures and the city structures. For the township councils, we have a new structure. What did this restructuring entail? It entailed at retitling some of the positions that are currently in our local authorities, changing their names. For example, in the new structure, what used to be called a deputy council secretary is going to be retitled to director of human resources and administration. What used to be called a council treasurer is going to be a director of finance. The restructuring also meant the alignment of departments of councils in recognition of the fact that we were also receiving some devolved functions from the center, marrying them with the local authority structures, creating new structures, new departments, like the Department of Community Services. Marrying our old community, you know, Department of Housing with a new, you know, devolved function for the Minister of Community Development. Like the Department of Health Services. Marrying our old Department of Public Health with a new, with the devolved functions of the health, you know, the health functions of the Minister of Health. These are the new, the new, some of the new changes. Like upgrading some of the the units, some of the offices, like the office of the internal auditor. For a long time there were complaints that the internal auditor was not effective because of the low status that they were occupying within the establishment of the local authorities. It was too junior. So under the new structure that has been recognized in that particular office, has been elevated. So has the position of procurement officer. It has been elevated. And I'm pleased to inform your colleagues, so standing in front of me, that even the position of public relations office has also been elevated. They will now have to sit. They will have to sit in the management so that they are able you know, to communicate with us outside the world. They're the face of the councils. Mm -hmm. They must be in a position to communicate with the outside world and tell the story of what's happening with the local authorities. So these are some of the changes that the restructuring has done to our local authorities. Now, these changes have operated to create vacancies in our local authorities. Which vacancies the commission must now fill? And this is the gist of the matter. 
it is it remains the commission now to take up this new structure and uh, provide the human resource to ensure that every position is manned or womaned by an appropriate <laughs> an appropriate officer. Now, what is interesting is that uh, the majority of the new vacancies that have occurred arising out of this exercise are in fields that are considered technical. <coughs> Engineering, for example. Under uh, the new arrangement, the CDF, there are a lot of public works that we are undertaking throughout this country. The construction of roads, mm. construction of bridges, mm. construction of castle blocks, mm. construction of, of clinics, maternity annexes. It requires this type of people to help us carry out these things. We need architects to help us in some of these technical jobs. We need building inspectors to ensure that uh, all these buildings that are mushrooming all over the country are in a good shape. We need quantity surveyors. We need land surveyors, especially in newly created districts. We need lawyers. Our local authorities, now more than ever before, require active legal departments to help sort out some of these, uh, you know, activities that are in place, some litigations that we might advise. Now, these are fields. When, when we call for people to express interest as a commission in the past, the response has been less than overwhelming. less than overwhelming. In other words, the response is underwhelming. And we thought that it is extremely important that we share this information with the country. That if our local authorities are going to perform their job of leading development, of ensuring that all these works that are now taking place, the massive works that are taking place throughout the country are done satisfactorily. We need this cadre of employees to train our local authorities. But in most cases, the response is less than what we require. Let me state this, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, that the market is saturated with social scientists. There are too many administrators, economists, whatever. There are too many. We don't have too many engineers, surveyors, architects. Build inspectors. This is what we must be having. So I want to call upon all parents to encourage their children mm. from now onwards. Because there's, there's no going back, it's the future of Zambia. Mm. And these institutions must be manned by people, competent people who are going to drive, drive development in our local authorities. 
We must never run short of this type, particular type of stuff. I'm calling upon all parents to encourage their children to take up some of these technical subjects. Let's not run away from them. There's a market, a yearning market for these people. There's a saturated market for the others where we're all now going. <coughs> In the end, we just have a pile of degrees with no jobs. Here are the jobs. I want to announce that in the next few days we'll be producing an artifact in our in our in our in our, in our, in our press, inviting more than seven hundred engineers, quality surveyors, architects, building inspectors to come and join local authorities and be part of the and be part of this revolution which is taking place. It's a call action. It's also a call to our parents to encourage our children to start branching off into this into these fields. It's extremely important that we do have this. You can imagine how many how much those few engineers that we have in our local authorities, how much uh, work is on their shoulders. If a council has one engineer they must consider all the jobs that are before them. And some councils have two, three, four, five, mm -hmm. six constituencies relying on one or two engineers. It's not satisfactory. In the end, the institutions that we've identified collectively as a nation, the institution which we've identified as one that is going to deliver development to our people, will be victory because it is not appropriate or satisfactory man or woman. So there is the invitation to all Zambians to take up this challenge and to join local authorities, especially in those areas that I've talked about. This is the reason, dear colleagues, that we thought we should call you here so that you can share this information with your good selves and help us interest our people to join local authorities. Things will never be the same again. The in feed, the focus is local authorities. That's where everything is going. So it's important that uh, we help shape this institution in a manner that will make it effective in the delivery of goods and services to our people. In short, that's the essence of this press briefing. We are open to any questions on what we have been said. Otherwise, thank you very much. <coughs> Thank you very much. I think the petitioner deserves another round of applause. Over 700 jobs is not a small issue. And as a public relations officer myself, honorable, um, I'm very Your happy. Your position has been elevated. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very happy to know that public relations has now been recognized as a management function. I mean, these are discussions that we have with our colleagues in, in our social media platforms. But to hear it coming from you, I think this deserves a round of applause again. Thank you very much. And we're very hopeful that even other things that we bring to the table uh, will be considered. But of course, I think it is a very serious call to action and it is uh, very important that we reiterate to our media colleagues like the commissioner has said, there's been, the chairperson has said, there's been very uh, limited or not very encouraging response in the past. So we are very hopeful that with this press briefing and with your presence here, we're going to have a um, very, very favorable response uh, to, towards this call. I'd like to invite uh, the Lusaka City Council Public Relations Manager, Madam Chola, to coordinate the question and answer session. Thank you. Thank you so much, Glenda.
Honorable Chair, thank you so much. Uh, well, comprehensive uh, uh, delivery of uh, your address. Thank you so much. Um, we are going to dive uh, a bit deeper uh, into the discussions uh, with uh, questions from the media, of course. And at this point in time, I invite questions from the media, uh, questions that will feed into this discussion. You are free to give us some questions, and we are very, very willing to answer each question. Thank you so much. Questions, please. Feel free. Yes, sir. Uh, my name is Christian Lawyer from uh, Zambia Daily Mail. Um, from, from the 700, or I've said more than 700, uh, that you are looking to engage, uh, are there specific numbers in terms of this number of engineers, this number of surveyors, or the details of their projects? I'll allow another question. We're going to take three questions in a row, and then we'll allow the chair to respond. Yes, madam. Good morning, Cherish Simoji from the comment. I just want to find out if the Ruby appliers are going to come. Each that should they apply from the districts they live in, or they can apply across town? Thank you so much. Another question? Please feel free. Yes, sir. Yeah, the question is a bit related to what she, she has asked, and the chair, uh, like you mentioned, that it's historical. And the shining of the local authorities by the team is mentioned. And most, most of the time, they've been used as a, as a starting point. And I heard the chair mention that this upgrade of, our, of the, these positions. Uh, uh, are we likely to see in line with the upgrade in terms of the emergency for this staff? Thank you so much. I'll now chair to respond to the three questions. Right, thank you very much. Um, is there a specific number of uh, engineers, quantity surveyors, electricians, and the like that is required? Indeed, there is a specific, uh, a specific number. I think on average, all those uh, three or four, four um, sectors I've talked about require numbers in the region of 90, 90, 90, 90, 90. So 90 engineers, about 90 quantity surveyors, about 90 electrical engineers, around that figure. But the specific ones will be seen when the advert is out in a, in, a, in a few days' time. Okay. Are they going to apply from the districts where they come from? The advert will be very clear on what needs to be done. I think our preference is that uh, people apply to the districts of their choice will indicate all the districts where these vacancies are. And the people will be free to make an application in the manner that will be prescribed in the update to the respective districts where they want to, to apply. Historically, there has been a shunning of these positions by the people mentioned. Is there any plan to look at the emoluments. emoluments? That's an extremely important uh, question and very valid. Indeed, sentiments have been heard to that effect that perhaps the reason why we receive responses that may be underwhelming in this particular field has to do with the environment uh, or the conditions of service for this particular cadre of employees. The commission does take recognition of that, and that is why <coughs> so currently there are active consultations between the commission and the management development division at the cabinet office 
to look into the possibility of uh, coming up with what we call a job evaluation regulating exercise. That exercise is going to look not only at these particular jobs that we have talked about, but look at the entire configuration of what has happened. We have the local authorities' employees, our old employees, in place. We have received employees from the centre who might have been, you know, enjoying, you know, relatively different conditions of service, but they must eventually be one. So, in order to harmonise the situation going forward, it has become imperative that some evaluation of these jobs be undertaken. So that each job is looked at to determine its value. Mm -hmm. What is the value of this job? Who must occupy this job? What sort of qualification must they have? If there is qualification, how much should they be rewarded? Mm -hmm. So that we get as close as is possible to appropriately remunerate whatever it's called, these positions accordingly. But that will only be determined after this exercise has been done. So indeed, we do take uh, cognizance of that, and we are hopeful that uh, we can quickly finish our internal consultations that we are able to tap with this particular exercise. It's an extremely important exercise because eventually, if everybody is going to the local authorities, they must all be enjoying similar conditions of service. Mm -hmm. The old council workers, the new people are coming from the centre, there must be harmony at one stage. But please bear in mind, we're into a transitional period, so a lot of work is still lying ahead of us, but we do recognize that important, uh, that important question. Thank you so much, Chair. We are going to take some more questions. If you have uh, some questions, please feel free uh, to question us. Some more questions, please, from the audience, the media. <coughs> yes, madam. <coughs> I'd like to mention that this is the last three uh, questions that we're going to take, so please make sure that you give us uh, an elaborated question. Thank you. My name is Tiara from Regatinix. I think it's uh, similar to what uh, the last person you were responding to asked. Um, there have been some reports of some local authority uh, workers not co getting consistent uh, salaries. They go for months without getting paid. My question is how is the commission dealing with this, especially considering the fact that you're taking in a huge number of people on board. Thank you. Thank you, madam. Yes, madam. Good morning. Um, my name is Pumachanda from Party once again. My question is that is the new structure that you are coming up with going to resolve some of the issues that we have seen in the past where there have been uh, squabbles uh, sometimes between the MP and the mayor or the, the council chairpersons in some cases in terms of handling the CDF and who should handle what. Sometimes there's squabbles even on things such as, you know, handing over uh, CDF projects to the community. Thank you, madam. Sir, please. Let me take a question, Chair. Uh, you mentioned about those that are removed from the central government to the local authorities. I was in view of um, uh, Two, two weeks ago, the PS uh, local government at the first briefing at which you were present measured the figure of uh, 25,000, and I heard you say that in excess of 25,000. Just want to be clear how you making a progress from the, the last two, two weeks or so. What? I will be moving, I will be uh, moving more stuff. Uh, from uh, the central government to local government, from the last 25,000 that the PS talked about uh, two or three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And the health dimension makes us of 35,000. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you, sir. Thank Would you like uh, uh, the chairperson to respond to those three questions? Chair. Thank you very much. Um, somebody has heard sentiments to the effect that um, council workers are not being paid. Some council workers are not being paid their salaries. We would be interested to know which council that one is. You may wish to know, colleagues, that um, we are in the process of appraising our principal officers throughout the country. This far, we have been to eight uh, provinces. We are remaining in southern and western to appraise all our principal officers. And uh, there is nowhere through this exercise where we have come across a council that is failing to pay its workers. Nowhere. All councils are able to pay council workers this time around. So I'll be very interested to know which specific council that is where some workers are not paid. Otherwise, that information is not what, is not what we have come across. And we've been physical with these uh, with these uh, with these people. In fact, one of the principal result area that they are being evaluated on is on payment of salaries to their employees. So, give us extra information, Norman. If uh, you stumbled up across some of this information, which the Commission does not have. Will these uh, changes also resolve issues of misunderstandings between mayors, MPs, DCs, and what have you? Well, the changes that we have talked about now are structural. And therefore, they have to do with the shape in which the local authority is going to be. The conflicts or misunderstanding that you might be referring to, that do surface from time to time in certain areas, largely have to do with the personalities that are involved. You know, an overzealous member of parliament, an overzealous mayor, a country, when they meet, it's a spark. Overzealous, it's DC. Overzealous, somebody, when they meet, it's a spark. It has nothing to do with the structure. It's a, it's, it has everything to do with the failure to appreciate one is there. All these jobs are well defined. Mm -hmm. What each one is supposed to do is well defined. It is those that fail to understand the way in which they are supposed to operate that create problems. But from time to time, as we interact with these different groups, it is something that we talk about. And I can assure you that uh, it would appear as if they're making progress. Again, in our evaluation of our principal officers, one of the deliverables mm. that uh, we look at is the collaboration of, or coordination of government programs in the districts, which involves councils working with other stakeholders to ensure that government programs are implemented without hiccups. And the reports, yes, we've come across one or two where there are misunderstandings of this nature. And the, the general report is that uh, there is increased collaboration that is existing between the different players because they are beginning to appreciate their different roles. That's what they are supposed to play. And in the end, teamwork, partnership is extremely key in ensuring that uh, we do not disturb development in our localities. 35,000 jobs, we have talked about 30,000 
uh, stuff that is uh, that has that has moved. Remember, dear colleagues, that when the president was um, 